sure. Yeah, it looks like I am recording. All right, thank you so much, everyone. I'm Darcy Becker, as I said earlier. Um, I, I wanted to tell you a little bit about me um, and who I am and, and how long I've been in the district. Um, I, am, I have been married for 40 years. Um, I'm the mother of two and the grandmother of three. I've been an educator in the state of Washington since 1986 and have worked in both public and private schools. Um, I have taught all grades, K through 12, um, and I taught in uh, private schools where it was multi-grade, multi-age, multi-grade um, uh, classrooms. And so I had the privilege of um, ending my teaching career teaching um, secondary uh, seven through 12 math, math and science. So um, taught for many years, um, moved to Western Washington in uh, July of 2000 and became a principal um, at Cherry Valley Elementary, which is in the Riverview School District um, in the Snoqualmie Valley. And I was there from 2000 to 2014. So 14 years in, in Cher at Cherry Valley Elementary in that school. Um, I left uh, Riverview School District and moved to Monroe School District where I was for three years. And then I have been in Edmond School District since July, 2017, serving in a um, district, uh, in a district administration capacity. So that's who I am. Um, you know, right now we have going on our kindergarten, one of our kindergarten transition events, which is Jumpstart, um, happening this week, Monday through Thursday, nine to 12. Really the purpose of Jumpstart is to build those relationships and connections between the students and the staff as well as student to student relationships. So it really is not an academically, um, an academically oriented program. It is really about building those social relationships, those um, ready for school kinds of routines, um, touring the school, getting to know the staff, and most importantly, the playground because some of our students play on the playground already, and I've seen some of them out um, playing on the Woodway campus or Woodway Center campus. Um, but some, it's it's a new uh, a new campus for them, so exploring and, and learning about all the fun things that they get to do at school, um, and then all of the um, teaching them how to use different classroom materials. What's the process for? Um, getting materials, what's the process for putting them back? Where do they go? We want them, the children to feel safe and confident um, at the end of these four days. So just really, uh, it really is all about relationships. Our next kindergarten transition event comes up uh, the first three days of the school year. Um, in the state of Washington, we have something called WAKIDS, and WAKIDS stands for Washington Kindergarten Indicators of Developing Indicators Skills. Of develop and most of the time, what people mean by that is the assessment component of that. But there are actually three parts of WAKIDS. The first one is family connection meetings. And those happen during the week of September 8th through 10th. They are individual meetings between teachers and families um, and giving the, the families an opportunity to get to know the teacher, um, to share information about your child. You're the first and, and most important teacher of your child. And so you have information, you, you know things about your child that, is, that are important for us to know. And so, so that's part of the task um, on those, during those family connection meetings. And then also to ask for you to ask questions and be able to um, have an understanding of what's going to happen um, in your child's classroom. It will be your first opportunity to meet with your classroom, your child's classroom teacher, uh, because this week in Jumpstart, children are rotating among the staff. So all of the children will see all of the teachers during the Jumpstart week and they won't be assigned necessarily to, um, they won't necessarily be assigned uh, to the teachers until later on in the week. Um, thank you for the, for the heads up about, uh, about muting. I'll make sure 
that I'm muting all. There we go. Okay. The second part of the WAKIDS, uh, of WAKIDS, which again is the Washington Kindergarten Indicator of Developing Skills, is what is called the whole child assessment. And it really isn't a test in the way that we think of a test. It's actually observational assessments that we do watching children, observing children in all of their daily activities within the classroom. And the teachers documenting or taking notes or take making, um, taking a picture or a, a short video of children doing um, different activities. And the tool that we use is called Teaching Strategies Gold, or sometimes you might hear people say TSG, and that is uh, that assessment tool, to take inventory of the incoming level of skills uh, among children. It looks at six areas, social, emotional, physical, cognitive, language literacy, and math. And the goal is to inform um, teachers and staff, uh, to inform teachers and staff of the incoming level of students so that we can design instruction, especially early, early on in the school year, to uh, support the students. We, we see it as an opportunity to also understand their strengths. So we want to not um, look at it as a who's not ready in what areas. We want to see what are the children, what do the children do well? And, and then collectively we look at what are the areas that we need, the children need a boost. And so if there are areas where we can boost their skills early on in the school year, that is uh, really important. Um, I know that there's a question and I'll answer some of the questions um, in the chat. There's a question about where family connection meetings will take place and please know that I will we'll talk about that later on um, in the agenda. I'm sure there's lots of questions around that. Um, the next thing I wanna do is just take a, a website tour. So I'm going to, um, to show you, um, it's gonna take me a minute to make the transition over, um, but to show you how to find the Woodway Center website. Um, we're trying to keep this up to date. As you know, it's, everything's been very fluid and a lot, of, a lot of action, a lot of things going on. And really our attentions have been around preparing the site, the classrooms um, for uh, the arrival of the children this morning um, and this week. And so uh, communications, um, I would say it's, it's been a little bit of a challenge because we are new, um, I'm new to a, a building role and uh, the office manager that we've hired is also new to a building role. So we're having, there's a lot of things that we have to learn about how to manage the website, how to communicate through SMORE, which will be our, our newsletter, um, uh, our newsletter uh, program that we will be using throughout the year. So there's just a lot of things to learn. And I thank you for your patience. I know there's been a lot, I've received lots of emails and responded to many people with answers, but getting group information out has been a little bit rockier and a little bit more challenging. And I take responsibility for that as the building administrator and, and you know, have prioritized um, some of the preparation of the site and hiring of the staff and, and all of those types of things over um, learning some of those other tools at this point. So I do apologize for that, but we are getting better. We're growing and learning all the time. So thank you so much for your patience. All right, the website tour, I want to show you. Okay, this is the Edmonds School District website. And to find Woodway Center, um, you can go up under select a school. And if you click there, you will see Woodway Center is listed here. It's the very last of the elementary schools on the list. Um, and so clicking on Woodway Center, takes you to our particular page, our particular Woodway Center page. And um, there are some news articles here that um, were things that were either sent to you via email. Um, if you were getting emails at that time, we've 
we've had some glitches with making sure that all of our families are actually getting our emails, but hopefully now that is working well. Um, if you go to about and about Woodway Center, there is some information on here that is important for you to know how to find it, where to find it. These are our phone numbers, our school times, a little description of kindergarten and a preschool at Woodway Center, a link to before and after, after care through the YMCA. And then our little welcome video that we produced back in, uh, that Harmony's team, the communication team in the Edmond School District produced back in, back in June, I believe, uh, is also there. There is a staff directory. The staff directory is not complete yet because we're still, um, we are still transferring um, staff from other locations or we have itinerant staff that will be at multiple locations and we're still updating the staff directory to, to show that. So um, under families, there is some information here, it takes you to the district site that talks about childcare options. And uh, we, we have uh, the YMCA at Sherwood, Westgate, Chase Lake, and the Woodway Center. So that is who is providing um, on-site before and after school, school-age programs at our, at our schools um, for this fall. So just wanted to kind of make you, or familiarize you with where things are in case that is, that, um, is new to you. Um, there is a, a rolling calendar here that has um, district early release days are on here. All of, all of those things are available to you on here. Um, at the district website, I did want to make you aware of, um, there are resources here on the district website under families. So this is also uh, an area of the website that would be important for you to, um, to know about. Um, and oops, I clicked the wrong button. Um, also under departments, there is um, transportation services. So if you have a transportation specific question, you're wanting to know uh, where the bus stops are. You're wanting to know the approximate um, uh, pickup time or drop off time at your bus stop. Transportation is, is really your resource um, for the, that information. So there's, there's lots of information on the website, but I think some of the more um, urgent are transportation um, services. So this is where you would find, when you click on transportation services, you're going to get kind of a, a menu um, of different, um, different types of questions. So when you call the phone, when you call the phone number, you're going to get a menu of options. And depending upon what it is that you're asking, um, you would press a different option. So if you want to understand, you know, just the gen ed kind of routing and boundaries, then you would press five. If you have other questions and you need to talk to someone, um, you can press zero. Uh, so you can uh, talk to someone in the office. Right, so I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint or my slides. Right. Technology takes just a few minutes here. So one of the questions that I often receive from families is, what is the kindergarten day gonna look like? Are kindergartners going to have access to lunch at school? Are they going to have access to music and PE and library? All the things that other kindergarten um, kindergartners have access to. And the answer to that is yes. The Woodway Center is an early learning campus that serves kindergarten and preschool children in all of the different areas that any other child kindergartner or a preschool in the district has access to. So um, this, is a, this is a sample schedule. It's just an example. Your, your child's classroom may have a little bit different schedule than this. Uh, but at this point, at this time, we are, we are a uh, late start school. So that means our campus, our school uh, bell, 
to use a, a school term, the bell time is at 920. Um, and then uh, dismissal is at 350. So it is the same hours or the same time as Sherwood Elementary, but later than Westgate Elementary. Um, students will, at this point, we are planning for students to eat in the classroom. And the reason for that is um, the number of tables <clears throat> and the space that we would need to put the children in the gym um, is, is just um, more, more tables than we actually can do unless we would do like five lunch groups or four lunch groups, which cuts down on our ability to do um, PE. And so we are planning to eat in the classroom um, at this time. And so, uh, so the lunch and recess, children will go to the, to the cafeteria, cafeteria to pick up their food, and then they'll come back to the classroom to eat. Again, that children will have all of the same activities. And I kind of color coded things together just so you could see. Um, play, play in kindergarten is very important. Play is really important. It's where a lot of our learning takes place. So it's where um, many of our uh, science concepts and social studies concepts, as well as social skills are learned during play for a lot of kindergartners. And so we, uh, we do have about an hour a day of play to learn. Um, as we go through the school year, that usually becomes shorter and shorter, or it becomes um, instead of five days a week, it might become four days a week or three days a week. It just depends upon the nature of how the children uh, develop. And if they need, if they need that play time, if they're beginning to move into a more academic, um, more of an academic schedule. Um, and the teachers, kindergarten teachers are very experienced at being able to determine that. Are the children ready to, to move away from uh, the length of time for play to learn. So this is just an example. Um, in green are those um, social and emotional relationship building times in the day. We use uh, a curricula or a, a system called responsive classroom, where we have you know, morning meeting and closing circle, where we are helping the children to develop and in, intentionally develop relationships between one another and uh, with the, the teacher in the classroom. So that's what the times in green are. Uh, the blue times are more literacy, um, kind of literacy times, phonics, writing, handwriting, reading. Uh, math is in orange. It looks kind of yellow, but it's supposed to be in orange. Um, and then uh, you'll see in the schedule that there is math, uh, there is PE and music and library in the schedule, just like there would be um, in any other school. Um, one of the things I really like to make sure that kindergarten parents understand is that um, success in school is, is about more than reading and math. It's also about having the, having the um, a learner's mindset. It's about being prepared for the academics through the relationships that you've built and the social skills um, that are that are intentionally taught to our children coming in. So we do use the second step program. It is a long standing, uh, very well respected um, program that was created by the Committee for Children here in Seattle actually, and is used across the country. So second step is very well known. Um, it focuses on four areas um, for kindergarten. The first would be skills for learning. So how to focus their attention, how to listen, how to use self-talk um, to keep themselves on track um, and to be assertive when, when they need help. So how, how to ask for help um, with their learning and, and with other social situations too. Um, the second area of focus is empathy. So helping students to understand um, their feelings and what happens when, um, or seeing things from another person's perspective. So understanding that when these things are happening to me, this is how I feel. I can look at that person's face and I can say, oh, I think they might be feeling 
this, you know, and how do I, how do I help my friend who's feeling like this? Um, so it, it's, it's a, that's a really critical skill for young children um, is developing empathy for one another. Emotion management is really about understanding strong feelings. So we feel strong feelings in our bodies and how do we, how do we manage those? How do we learn what skills can we acquire that help us to calm, calm ourselves um, when we are feeling those strong feelings? And, and we use, of course, we use age appropriate terms, but also accurate terms for teaching children about how to do that. Um, and then the final unit or the final area of focus is really on problem solving. So when you have a social problem, how do you solve that problem? How do you solve it so that everyone who's, who's involved with having that problem has a say in the solution of that problem? How do you solve a problem so that everyone feels like the problem or the solution is fair, that the solution meets their needs, and that the solution is that they can make a commitment to the solution? So that's really um, the four areas of focus um, of second step for kindergarten. We have lots of other kind of social and emotional resources that, that we will um, provide for our children throughout the school year, classroom lessons delivered by the school psychologist or counselor on friendship and um, personal safety, anti-bullying, those types of things. Also opportunities for individual or small group support where that is needed. Um, and then supports to families, supports to parents. If you have a concern or a question about your child's social or emotional needs, uh, the school psychologists and counselors are available to also support you as your child's first and most important teacher. I'd like to make sure that you hear that. Um, we also will have English learner services. So if your child's first language is something other than English, or if at your home language is mostly another language uh, besides English, um, provisionally, you can assume that provisionally they will be considered eligible uh, for English learner services. They may not need English learner services, but, or, or like active instruction in English learning um, in addition to what they would have in the classroom, but there are different resources that might be available to you based upon um, your child's, uh, we do an assessment at the very beginning of the school year um, on their English language acquisition, so or their language development, and um, so your child may or may not qualify for services in the in the longer term. But in the short term, we uh, we assume that your child is provisionally eligible until we're able to determine um, their level of language acquisition. And those English learner services can be everything from just collaboration or or um, providing resources to the general education teacher. It can be push in um, small, push into the classroom kind of services, small group, um, individual pullout services. Although we will have um, primarily at Woodway, we will push into classrooms, but there could be some instances where we need to pull out individuals or small groups for a certain length of time. Um, and so, those are the examples of what English learner services might look like. We have on site a developmental kindergarten classroom. A developmental kindergarten is our is um, service to kindergarten students with IEP supports um, that are that require additional additional um, intensive support. So it could be for a variety of reasons. Um, it could be mobility, it could be um, students who have limited vision or, or hearing, it could be a, a variety of communication delays, um, social and emotional skills, adaptive skills. So the ability to um, support themselves in um, toileting or um, like I said, mobility around the campus. So there's a variety of different reasons why students qualify for a developmental kindergarten. Um, our developmental kindergarten children will be included 
um, in the gen ed classrooms to the extent possible as directed by their IEP teams. So um, I'm really excited about that. I'm having an inclusive classroom, an inclusive preschool and kindergarten model um, at Woodway Center. Very excited about that. So I have been talking for about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more than that. And I know you all have questions. So I am going to stop my share and I'm going to look through the chat a little bit. Maybe um, Harmony, if you can help me with some of, you might be able to kind of go back a little bit further in the, in the questions. I am just in case we get a thing about a person taking pictures. I'm gonna take a couple of pictures of the, of the sign up front and the new sign. Okay, and just tell the lady at the front to turn me. Okay, hang on a minute. I'm gonna mute mute all again. Okay, so do we have any questions? Um, yes, the question is about food service. In the Edmonds School District, all children qualify for food for, um, for school lunches and breakfasts this year um, as part of the federal grant um, for, uh, for nutrition this year. So yes, just the same as any other in any other school. Can I add a little bit to that, Darcy, just Please. to put a plug in for food service? Please. Um, so we really encourage families um, who can to take advantage of this. It's a really great thing that your kid, your all students will get breakfast and lunch at school. As a parent, it means not having to pack a lunch. Um, it also means it's it's free to you. And it also means jobs for our food service workers. So the more meals that they serve, the more we can employ these hardworking individuals to serve our students. So I really just want to put a plug in for that as well. Thanks, Darcy. Sure. And we still are um, taking applications for free and reduced lunch. Um, so even though all children eat, if you qualify or if you think you qualify for free and reduced lunch, it's still important for you to fill out that paperwork. And part of the reason is that there are many supports to buildings that are available that are not food service oriented, that are available to schools if, if your child qualifies for free and if a certain percentage of the population qualifies for free and reduced lunch. So it's very important for our schools, for the academic component of our schools to have free and reduced lunch numbers as accurate as possible. So while you don't need to fill it out for the free um, food service this year, um, it still is valuable to our schools and, and very um, important for our schools to have accurate uh, funding. And just to add to that, Darcy, sorry, we're, we're trying to really um, inform families that it's like, do you need financial support? So it's a lot of paperwork that's been branded for years from the state that's just free and reduced lunch. That's all, that's all you've heard. That's all we heard as kids. But it's really, do you need financial support? And then this paperwork, it's still titled free and reduced lunch, which to Darcy's point, yes, you school food is free for all, no paperwork, no nothing. If you show up for school, your kid gets free food. Um, but it's really important to fill out that financial support free and reduced paperwork to Darcy's point. But just really wanna get people outside of the free and reduced. So thank you. Right. We do have um, the question about, uh, what about students with allergies or specific um, nutritional requirements? We do have, we do have record of students who have food related sensitivities or allergies. Um, food service has, they know about students um, that have food related um, sensitivities or allergies. So we provide a range of food. We also do um, respect cultural um, and religious observances in our schools. And so we, uh, we also provide um, vegetarian options, for instance, for our families who maybe um, uh, halal meat is a requirement um, of, their, of their belief system. And so we, we try to make sure that we're accommodating and we do accommodate a variety of different, not only food sensitivities and allergies, but also um, in, uh, nutritional preferences. So um, just so that you are aware of that. Um, let me see another question. 
I paused my recording there for accidentally. Um, so one of the questions that I saw early on was about family connection meetings. We are not able to have family connection meetings in the classroom this year. And that is due to COVID protocols. That's just due to the amount of adults, non-school essential adults within, um, the, within the buildings. So we are working at Woodway to come up with some other ways that you can, once you know who your classroom teacher is, that you could visit the classroom without um, attending inside the classroom. So we are still working on some of those decisions and we'll have information to you soon. Um, is there a way that you could, in other words, see the classroom from outside the classroom? Um, are there some videos that we can create, video tours that each classroom teacher would um, create that shows their, their classroom and where the teacher is kind of taking you on a tour of how, how their classroom would work. So um, the, is there a list of teachers at the school? In the, on the district or on the Woodway Center school directory, the kindergarten teachers that are, are, are on the school directory, I think most of the staff that are not there yet are um, itinerant staff. Some of our para ed educators are not on the list yet. Um, our, our preschool staff isn't fully on the list yet, but I think all of our kindergarten teachers um, are on the list. So um, we have, let me see, we have Carrie Engel, Engelbert, Engel, Engel, Eng, Engbert um, from Westgate, um, Elizabeth Nogales from Westgate, Roy Kindleberg from Westgate, and Patty Gilman from Westgate, who um, Patty will actually be uh, moving to our remote school. So she, she is teaching uh, Jumpstart this year, or Jumpstart this week, but she will be moving to our um, e-learning e academy. Um, from Sherwood, we have Shannon Stewart, Shannon Stewart Mo uh, Morehouse. We have um, Mallory Cook. We have Libby LeCompte. Um, and also uh, Jamie Wang from, um, from Westgate. So those are our kindergarten teachers right now. So some of our kindergarten teachers, most of our kindergarten teachers stayed in kindergarten and moved to Wood, Woodway Center, um, but not, not all of them um, did. And so that's where we're at right now. Um, there will not be health attestation forms required this school year. Um, again, though, we'll wanna make sure that if your child is experiencing symptoms and they can often look similar to a cold, but if they're experiencing symptoms that, that you would keep them home. Um, and uh, we will do a little bit more, um, we will do a little more communication around that as it gets closer to the first day of school around what those, uh, from the nurse, around what those symptoms are and um, the best way for um, managing, if you, if you have a concern, if your child was exposed, per, perhaps, um, what some testing options might be if, if you prefer to go that direction. Um, so if your child is in, I, I see a question about how do we notify you that an external before and after school care, uh, a daycare center will be handling pick up and drop off? Um, that's a really great question. I think we will First off, we will handle that through our teacher, our teaching staff. So once you know who your teacher will be, you will get an email, a welcome email from your kindergarten teacher, and they will want to know, okay, how are they getting to school? How are they getting home? And then we'll create a common uh, Google document, a, Duke, a Google sheet that shows all of the children and how they're going home. Are they being picked up? Are they on a bus? Are they being picked up by, you know, ABC learning, are they, who, who, where are they going and how are they getting to and from school? Um, the classes will not be split by Westgate. Kids are in Westgate classrooms and Sherwood kids are in Sherwood classrooms. 
Um, so they will be they will be all together. Um, about approximately half of the students are Sherwood students, and about half of the students not not exactly, but about half. I think there are more Sherwood students actually than there are Westgate, but um, approximately half are from each school, and so um, they will uh, they will be um, intermixed. So there will be Westgate and Sherwood students in your classroom. Um, let me see. So I'm, I'm often, I, there, I see a question from Carrie, how will Sherwood families manage siblings with the same drop off and pick up time? Is there a plan for drop off and pick up? Yes, I know often there's a long line at Sherwood of cars. Um, similar to what happened this morning at Woodway, um, the goal would be that children who can ride the bus, ride the bus. So the very simplest way is if you're eligible for transportation that you avail yourself of transportation. Um, and there are walking zones for Sherwood. There are walking zones for Woodway. There are walking zones for Westgate. And there's a bit of an overlap in, in those walking zones, but for but they are different enough that you could avail yourself of transportation for one of your students and transport the other if you wanted to. Um, the other thing would be another suggestion would be um, carpooling. So if you have a friend, if you have friends uh, in, in your close neighborhood, and one family can take the older children to Sherwood and one family can take the younger children to Woodway. That's another way. Um, some of the PE teachers have suggested walking um, school buses where parents rotate responsibility, uh, like a couple of parents rotate responsibility for walking the children from their neighborhood to the school. And so instead of every parent having to walk, you know, all of their children individually that um, we do some or that parents organize a, a walking school bus. So that is another way. Um, the other thing that I would just say is most of the time, most schools have an earliest time that you can drop off, right? So depending upon the earliest time that you can drop off, um, there may be a way to drop one of your children off early or the older children or the younger child off early and the younger or the, the opposite um, later. And I know Sherwood especially, but Westgate as well, one of the challenges is parking and um, school drop off and pick up. That's going to be a similar challenge at Woodway as you probably learned this morning. So being as prepared as you can possibly be for your child to, be ex to exit from the car quickly and smoothly would be uh, just a training and getting into a routine of training uh, about um, drop off um, and, and pick up on the reverse. So um, those would be my suggestions. I think there are probably lots of, there are probably numerous other things, but those are again, the ones that I'm thinking of. And we do have before and after school care at both sites. So if you need to drop off some children, you know, 15 minutes before the official drop off time um, and 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 um, obtain child care, uh, that is also a possibility too. Um, that's a, it's a good question, Michelle. Michelle's asking what time will breakfast be served and what time is the earliest drop off? We are enrolling students every day at Woodway. And because we're, in, we're still enrolling quite a few children, uh, transportation is changing. So their routing is needing to change. So part of the earliest time will depend upon um, the, when breakfast will be served will depend upon uh, the bus's arrival because we still, we want the children who are on busing or who are being bused to also have access to breakfast. So I would say safely, probably breakfast would be around 9 a.m., would start around 9 a.m., school would start at 9.20. So for breakfast, children will most likely be in the gym because the classroom teachers are still um, 
have planning time in the morning to, to prepare and be ready for their day. So children who are eating breakfast will come in um, and, and will be at individual tables um, for, or at six foot apart um, seating in the, in the gym. So breakfast, I would say we could be safe in saying 9 a.m. for breakfast. Um, we may be able to start earlier than that, just depending upon what happens with all transportation, all things transportation. But um, nine o'clock is a pretty safe bet. Um, let me see. The ventilation and filtration systems have been, I mean, they've, they've updated with filters, they've updated the air, the amount of airflow um, coming in, the fresh air coming into the building. So yes, that all has been um, done in accordance with uh, protocols in the school district. Um, what protocols will be in place to protect kids from COVID? So all the staff um, and students in the building will be masked. So that's, that's one of the very most important. Um, the of primary importance for you to know is that the Superintendent of Public Instruction made the recommendation to the governor and the governor has um, mandated that all state employees, including all people who work in the public schools, public and private schools, will be vaccinated by, I think it's October 18th is the date, somewhere in there. So that is a very important protocol to protect children from COVID is that the adults in there the, those eligible in their um, in their building will be vaccinated. Um, they will be masked. We we will use a lot of hand um, washing and sanitizing protocols. We have uh, we will keep although surfaces are not a major source of uh, transmission. Um, we will of course have cleaning protocols and things in place. Um, students are able to share. Um, some materials, uh, materials that can be cleaned, um, will be able to share some materials um, at their tables this year, um, unlike in the past. Um, they will be seated as close to three feet apart as possible. And in some of our schools um, and some of our classrooms, that's a little harder than others. So, um, so those are the main ways or the primary ways um, that we as a school have control over. And for um, the major thing that the parents have control over is making sure that if your child has symptoms, even if it looks like a cold, that they are that they stay home from school when they're ill. So that, that is the main thing um, that the, poor, that the um, families can do to, um, to manage COVID exposures. Um, can the children eat outside? We don't have a covered, we have covered eaves at, um, at Woodway, but we don't have a covered area. So we don't have a covered playground area. So we could eat outside as long as the weather cooperates, um, but we, we actually don't, um, we don't have a covered play shed um, to be able to feed kids under. And then if we are feeding kids under there, we can't use it for recess either. So that's kind of, um, let's see, how are portables going to be utilized at the back of the school? One of the portables will be the music room. One of the portables will be office space or workspace for, we have a, a significant amount of itinerant staff members which means that they serve in multiple schools. So they need a works, they might need a workspace and access to a phone, things like that when they are working at Woodway. And that is um, that one of the portables will be used as an itinerant workspace, um, office space um, building. And then the other one at this point um, is scheduled to be uh, storage of additional furniture and things that we have um, in case we expand and grow um, at Woodway over the years. So, so that's what the three portables we, we used for. The student classrooms are all within the buildings. Um, kindergarten is in building A, building B, and building um, two, two rooms of building E. So they're 
kind of clustered towards the front of the, of the site. Um, will there be a remote option? So if there's a COVID exposure and we need to close a classroom or we need to close the site, which could happen, I hope not, but uh, this, we will follow the health department's recommendations of what we need to do or their directives of what we need to do. Um, and uh, so would they have potentially have um, times when they're going fully remote or for a period of time? And I would say, um, we hope not, but that is always an option. Our students do have Chromebooks, they will have Chromebooks. And so we would have the option to go and provide remote services, even if the students um, are needing to be um, out of school for a period of time. Um, let me see. I, I just want to explain itinerant, what I, I, I know I'm using probably new, using language that is that you might not be familiar with. So an itinerant um, staff member is someone who um, provides services to kids. Typically they are um, um, in learning, uh, learning assistance program lab or they're English learner teachers or they are SLP speech and language pathologists who serve the children and they serve in multiple locations. And so they, um, they would only be at Woodway say on a Monday or they might only be there Wednesday and Thursday afternoons. So we call the, those staff itinerant staff, meaning they move around from building to building. Um, let me see, um, art classes. Art is in the elementary schools is typically taught by the classroom teacher. So yes, they do, they will have art. They do have art embedded in lots of other things. So there would be, um, there may not be a specific, it, it, part of it depends on the teacher and it depends on the teacher's, um, the teacher's schedule. This was just a sample, but one of the options in play to learn is always art, art, um, three-dimensional building sculptures, painting, those types of things. Um, but also, uh, intentional connections to the curriculum through art. So, um, and, and a lot of that is teacher directed or is teacher, um, teacher planned and supported. Um, we do have access to a curriculum that is through um, arts. Mm, I can't remember the name of the, oh, I just lost it. Um, there is, a, we, they do have access to some lessons that they can teach that, um, that are available to our teachers, but, um, it, it is really up to the teacher's discretion how exactly they do, how they um, integrate that into their instruction. Okay, how you, how you, um, I think the, the there's a question about how do you sign up for transportation? Um, typically transportation is assumed, we assume that every child who's eligible for transportation is going to be transported in the school district. If you have a question, if you wanna make sure that your child is actually going to be picked up, you can call the transportation office um, and, and check with them. And they can tell you where your child's um, bus stop is. They can also tell you what time, approximately what time they will be picked up and dropped off um, based upon their, their bus stop. Let's see, Harmony, do you see any? Oh, yes, thank you for the reminder, Harmony. Also in Skyward, if you have, if you have been able to access your child's account in Skyward or your child's information, transportation information is, all, is also available to you in Skyward. So you can, you can look them up, up in Skyward um, yourself. Um, uh, remember on the school district website, I showed you how to get to transportation. Um, I don't have their transportation number memorized, but let me see if I can find it while we are chatting. And just to add to that, so the Skyward information, 
um, is a great place to get familiar with. And the transportation information should be, routing information should be there today. So if you've checked it um, before today, it might not have been updated, but uh, transportation has been working on that. So I encourage you to check there first, just to save a phone call. Um, but if you have more questions, transportation is definitely there for you and, and willing to answer all your questions. So the, the transportation, um, student transportation number is 425-431-7230. And the menu option for general education routing is five. So it will ask you, it will give you a menu of options. Five is for general ed. Um, special needs is three. Preschool routing is four. So that information is, is available to you on the website. But as, um, as Harmony um, pointed out, going ahead and checking on, in Skyward um, yourself is probably the most efficient. Um, way to find out. And then real fast too, so some people are asking about Skyward. So Skyward should have been how you register or you enrolled your student if you did it online. It was that um, place. If you go to the district website, there's a hot button in the middle of the screen that says Skyward. So you can click there. And if you need to reset your password, it's a pretty fast process. So I encourage you to play around with that to get a lot of the information. Skyward is our um, student management system. So it's our student information management system that we use in the district. All right, any other questions, Harmony, that I should address? Yeah, there was, will kids be able to play with other friends outside of their classroom at recess or are we going to keep classrooms with classrooms? Yeah, that's a, you know, we were very hopeful that we would be able to unmask and be able to just play this this year. For the start of the school year, that doesn't look like that's going to be the way it works. Um, so for the start of the school year, our intention is to keep students in, in cohorts on the playground. And um, hopefully that if we can get case counts, if we can get numbers down in Snohomish County, we can get vaccination rates up. Um, and uh, illness rates down, hospitalizations down. Um, I'm hoping for re relaxation in those in those rules. But for right now, for the start of the school year, students will be cohorted on the playground. Um, the mask issue is we're, we still are encouraging masking even at recess. Um, some of the children will use uh, recess time as a mask break. So um, and and which is important too um, for children to have those options. Um, but we will have them move from to the side um, during times when they need a mask break. So that's how we're starting. Hopefully it won't stay that way for very long. Uh, we believe it's really important for children to be able to play and be able to play in large groups. So um, we'll get there as quickly as we can. And then just a, so a couple questions about Skyward, if you did do the paper um, registration, if you go to the website, uh, the Edmond School District website, and you find Skyward, there should be directions there on how to set up an account. Um, and then the technology department will make that happen. Yeah, so let me, let me go back to the district website here. And the other question, Darcy, um, that we, we you missed with there um, was how many kids do we expect in each classroom to teach kid to teacher ratio? Yeah, we're growing all the time. I think we are right now. Uh, let me do my math real quickly because I it it's very fluid. <laughs> it's changing. Um, right now we're at twenty two to twenty three kids in a classroom. So I don't know at what, at what stage we will get another teacher. It could be that we get another teacher. It could be that we don't get another teacher. Um, and so I'm, I am just, um, if we were to add a teacher at Woodway right now, we would be down to, we would only be down to, um, we would only be down to 20 students per classroom. So we are still, um, we're still, in the, we are early enough in the planning for next school year, since our kindergartners don't start until September 13th, um, that we don't have final staffing um, determined at this point. 
Uh, masks required at recess, yes, uh, we are requiring them. Um, is there a plan for a PSO? Yes, absolutely. I have met with um, leaders of both um, uh, or members of both uh, Westgate and Sherwood um, PSOs to talk about that. Um, it, we, we're not at that point yet where we have um, coordinated kind of like an opening meeting at this point yet, um, but that is something that we wanted to do in connection with family connection meetings somehow um, and do some kind of a, um, oh, like a um, registration, um, blitz around, you know, register for parent um, staff organization and do kind of a communication blitz out to families so we can get going and um, up and running soon. Um, we absolutely want a PSO at Woodway Center and we have a lot of support from staff in both, both buildings, so, or families in both buildings. Um, as far as family connections, once you know who your classroom teacher is, your classroom teacher will email you a welcome letter. And as part of that welcome letter will be a sign up on a Google sheet. So the schedule for family connection meetings will be um, available to you and you'll just go in and you'll sign up for the time uh, that works for your schedule. So each teacher will have a different, a little bit different schedule. Some are willing to go into the evenings um, start later, go into the evenings more frequently than others. It just depends on their family commitments. So we, uh, so each teacher will schedule that with you. Let me see. Is there anything we need help with? Oh man. Um, our, one of the things that we're wanting to do is kind of a campus beautification day, which I'm hoping to schedule on September 11th. It will be before the students come back, but after family connection meetings. And that just has to do with, you know, everything else that's going on right now. Um, so my, my goal is to do a campus beautification day um, where our families can come out. We also are really um, trying to be creative around how to have how to create access to the classrooms for parents without violating the district protocol around limiting um, people in the buildings. So we are, we are still really kind of uh, mulling that over and trying to be very creative about that. So if you, have, if you have ideas for how we could do that in a not violating the district's um, expectations around no indoor family connection meetings, um, that would be great. Also, um, I would say just communicating out with your neighbors and friends about here's, you know, here's Woodway Center, here's what it's about. Um, here's who to contact, you know, I'm, I'm the best contact, the best, uh, or one of the best contacts for questions that you would have about how, what is the protocol for this going to be? What are, how are you going to manage that? Or what are we going to do about, you know, those types of questions? If you have specific questions about your child's registration, or you have specific questions about their immunizations or, you know, those type of technical questions, then probably the best person for you to chat with and, and she can direct you appropriately is Stacy Rentfro, who is our office manager. Stacy is new on the job as an office manager. She's doing a great job. So she is your first point of contact for those kind of technical questions that you might have um, around registration and immunizations and times of this, or who do we contact for that? Um, her extension, her phone number is 425-431-3811. So that's her direct line, um, or you can always send her an email. Um, and if you if you look her up on the district, I, um, I can't remember her numbers. All of our district protocol for our email addresses are the same: last name, first initial, and then there's three numbers. And I think hers is like 406, but I I could be wrong. But it's Renfro S, and then she has three numbers. 
um, at edmunds.wednet.edu. So there is a parent group Facebook page, which is not necessarily directly related to the PSO yet, but there is um, oh, 665. Thank you, Brenda Murphy. Redfro S665 at edmunds.wednet, W E D N E T. Dot edu. Uh, there isn't a PSO established yet, but there is a Facebook page for Woodway families that is being managed right now by one of the families, I think by um, a family at Sherwood or by a parents at Sherwood. So that it, there is a Facebook page. Um, they may or may not uh, have answers to you for you, but but they can always they know how to get in touch with me. So if there are questions that come up, um, those have come up to me through our contacts in both buildings, um, Westgate and in, at Sherwood. Anyone else? Any other questions that I should answer? I know it's past our time, and you have to get back to pick up your Kinder. So. Eleven fifteen. It's eleven fifteen. I I can't see the chat anymore. It's so it's there's a lot in the chat. But what I will do is um I will save the chat and I will add the chat. I have a document that I've created that hasn't got uploaded to our Facebook or to our uh, web page yet. That is frequently asked questions. So I will add. Um, your questions to that frequently added, asked questions um, document, and then we'll get that uploaded to the um, to the website so that you can kind of scroll through and see the answers to some of your questions. And Darcy, there's one question we saw a couple times, and I think we missed uh, you missed was um, how do when will they find out who their teacher is and how? Mm -hmm. You will find out through an email from your teacher. So you will get an email from your child's teacher and that will likely happen, I, I, I think safely um, on Monday, it could happen earlier than that, but um, we, are, we have a lot of kindergartners to place. So we have 100, uh, close to 180 kindergartners right now. So that's a lot of kindergartners and, and creating those class lists, um, we, We'll create some initial class lists for Thursday, but we will meet after our Thursday session to finalize those class lists. So you will find out as, as quickly after as possible. Um, Stacy um, Rentfro will be upload will be uploading that information into Skyward, the classroom assignments starting on, on Friday. So if you, if you happen to be at the front of that line, you might be able to see it in Skyward um, on, starting on Friday. But I would say safely Monday would, would be um, a reasonable expectation around getting those um, class lists out. That's most, most kindergarten, most buildings have between 60 and 80 kindergartners to place. We have 180 kindergartners to place. So it just takes some time to do that. Any, any other questions? Well, thank you so much, parents. Thank you so much for coming. And like I said, I'm gonna hang on to the chat uh, and all the questions in the chat and add them to our FAQ document. So hopefully if I wasn't able to answer it directly during this meeting that you'll be able to, to um, have those answers soon um, available through the website. All right, thank you so much. Have a great day. I, I can't wait to hear the wonderful stories about you getting your kinder back and all the fun that they've had this morning. Bye. Arminie, are you still there? Bye.
Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brilliant. Have a great day.